So, all right, welcome everybody. I know I just went over everything here before I hit record. So for the recorded session, today is going to be taking a file that is a no more than just a drawing. And we are going to go from start to finish through part works as far as drawing it to size. And we are going to give it a tool path and have it ready to be sent out to the shop bot. This will be ready to cut within the next hour well, during our training session. So a lot of times, I like a recommendation to get really good with uh, drawing and part work, especially for new users, is to find stuff like this and then simply redraw it uh, to, to scale, to size, I mean, in part works or Aspire, and then toolpath it and go cut it before you start getting into designing your own this way this will help you really learn a lot of the tools the drawing tools and the toolpathing uh, functions within the software so again this is simply a tic-tac-toe board that I've previously cut cut a I cut the uh, the back out of beach and then this was some the X's were red oak and the O's were walnut just to give it a contrasting color so, you know, feel free to cut it all out of whatever materials you have. You could even cut it out of plywood and, you know, spray paint the two colors. Um, so uh, that's what we did doing today and uh, go through from everything from the just following the measurements of the, of the hand drawn to get it calculated, drawn, and toolpath in the software. And that will be today's training. And just, you know, to... Throw out a few things here for reference. Um, hopefully, I'm going to have a camera available in the next month's training. I'd like to be able to do uh, machine maintenance and care, and I'd like to be able to actually do that with a webcam. So we'll actually step away from the software for a session or two and start doing some concentrating on the physical shop by itself. So that's what's hopefully coming here next. All right, just for future reference, if you come to our main page, go to the training page. Um, this is where it talks about our basic trainings and signing up for this live web-based training, which you've all done if you're here today, but for anybody watching later on. Right here is also a thing called a training schedule, which will have all of our schedules coming up, not only our trainings, but our, our camp shop bots and maker fairs that we participate in. Just a great way to come out and see some of the people that are you know behind the scenes here at ShopBot and some of the other avid cutters and what they're up to and, and the projects and just feed off each other. And the other one I want to show you here is just training tutorials and videos. So any of the previous ones that I've done are recorded and put on here as far as like spending a full two hours on the tool database, bit selection, feeds and speed. You know, you could go and watch that one. So um, there's just some other trainings. And, you know, hopefully we'll get some more with a live camera out out on the machine, out on the physical shop by itself. So, all right, with that said, I have next to me, um, a printed version of this drawing measurements. So if you have it, follow along. If you don't, I'm not going to keep referring back to this. So if you don't have it, you know, if you got a second monitor, you can do a, a split screen. Um, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to be using this. And um, also, if you go to our ShopBot forum, you'll see all these files that you can download for today's training. Um, there's the uh, measurements, there's the picture, and then there's the PartWorks file already done. So what we're going to start to do is a new, is a new file. So uh, what we're going to do is spend the most of the beginning of this training here in the PartWorks, drawing this and toolpathing it. And then we're going to open up ShopBot 3 and do a preview. Um, we can actually run, we'll actually run our file in preview mode on this on the machine. So I'm physically not connected to a ShopBot. I'm in the uh, conference room, so I don't have a move cut feature. And I don't want to move cut yet because I want to preview this file and make sure I drew it right before I go and cut and break a bit or cut into my spoil board. So I'm always able to click down here into preview mode. So we'll come back to this at the end of the training and then open it up to any questions that you have. So I'm going to start a brand new file. And, um, you know, PartWorks is what we use, uh, is what we sell with our machine, and some of you have upgraded to Aspire. And to also I'll give these guys a plug, uh, the Vectric guys, just because I love everything that they do. 
their, between their software and uh, their their support and their uh, training sessions and online stuff that they have uh, is Vectric.com. And Vectric is who makes the software that we'd be using, that we use our Partworks and our Aspire. And I, I use these guys a lot. I suggest a lot of people to use them. They have a lot of available 3D clip arts um, and files over here that are just awesome. And and in their support section, you can always come in here and use their forum for asking questions. They've got projects they can download, and then even their training material. So any Aspire stuff that you want to uh, watch, um, they have great tutorials. And then also remember that Partworks is the same as VCar Pro. Um, they just call it Partworks for us because it only processes out to a shop bot versus other CNCs and and then you get a better deal through that so but you can go in and watch these through uh, these tutorials and uh, James just does an awesome job just, just a top-notch job and I remember when I first started with ShopBot and I wanted to learn the software faster I would come in and download these videos and have a split screen and just watch watch his tutorial on one screen and have part works open in the other and just follow back and forth so just, just very well done they're nice little short clips so you can watch them and then go practice them so alright good work to these guys they what makes it uh, easy on our end to uh, cut some stuff out so alright let's get going now part works open up a new file so um, I'm gonna kinda go over some basics as we do this and this is just a whole start to finish just to get you um, you know when you come here for the two-day training we're throwing everything at you hold down um, machine safety machine orientation CAD to cam you know it's two days that really could be drawn out to five and we jump around and co cover a lot of topics so this is where I wanted to have one training together that goes all the way from a drawing to a toolpath item that we can cut and this is usually what we do Saturday morning in the in the basic training here in Durham but by then too I have also see a lot of people's eyes rolling back in their head going oh dear lord there's more <laughs> so um, this should be a good training for this so the first thing we do when we open up the software is we're able to create or open an existing and for us today we're going to create a new file and this is where we can go in and give it the uh, the parameters to the size, the job setup. So what we're actually doing right now is setting up the material size. So this white box that we're looking at, this is the size of the, the piece of the material that we're going to use. So f for us right now, um, let's just say I've got a blank out here that's uh, 20, uh, 24 inches by 24 inches. So uh, notice when I change these measurements how the white box changes. So right now I've got a 24 in the X and 2 inches in the Y. So you can set these parameters to whatever, you know, whatever size your material is and the software is going to calculate that and you're going to draw it in that. But you, you as the user need to make sure when you go out and physically place this board on the shop bot that you're lining your board up correctly here in the X and here in the Y. A lot of mistakes happen right out off the top is someone will draw draw this because it's a, it's a square and then they'll go out and have it actually rotated 90 degrees on their machine and cut and it's it's going against the grain or if this wasn't a square piece it was rectangular it might start cutting off into no man's land. So um, get your job set up Right, 24 by 24 is our material size, and then the material thickness is three quarters of an inch. So I set that as 0.75. And also remember, in the uh, in these in these columns, you can also type in fractions. Three divided by four equals, and it changes it to the decimal equivalency, which is very convenient when you're using material, say that's you know 15. Uh, 64 you know where I wouldn't know that one right off the top of my head boom there it is so I bet Eugene probably knew that one um, but uh, three you know three fourths if you didn't know that one boom there it is 0.75 so put in your thickness of your material 
And how often is our material actually 0 0.75? Very, uh, very unlikely. It's usually 0 0.74, 0 0.76. Uh, you know, so make sure you got a nice set of digital calipers and you can just check it real quick. So um, Eugene asked a question, do you set extra to make sure it cuts through? like 0.77. So he's got a point. So say my material is exactly 0.75 and I go and tell my bit to only go 0.75 deep, there's a good chance that if there's a discrepancy in that material someplace it was actually 0.76, it wouldn't cut all the way through. And now I've got a trim router out and a utility knife and I'm trying to make this thing work. So I would actually have it cut like 0.77 or 0.78. But I don't set that up here. I set that up in the tool path. So um, we'll get into that, and, and you know, that's why our spoil board is there. It's for us to uh, cut down into. It's a sacrificial board. It's sacrificing itself for us. <laughs> so the other thing right here is material Z0, and this one's very important because I don't know how many in here will even admit to it. Uh, we've uh, all had the Z0 set in the wrong spot, and we've cut down into our table three quarters of an inch or a quarter inch the wrong way so um, so I'm going to set my material exactly to the thickness that it is and I'm going to zero it to the table and here's the reason I normally zero to the table I don't know about you guys but in a four foot by eight foot sheet I, I normally use Baltic birch and that measures about 0 0.7 in thickness but if I took my digital calipers and I ran it around the edges, I'm going to get differences bet between 0.68 to 0.71 and possibly 0.72. So you know, there's a good there's a good variance of thicknesses in there. Well, if I set my machine thickness, or I'm sorry, if I set my zero to the machine bed, it doesn't matter the different variances in this thickness because it's zeroed off the the bed. It, it doesn't matter if it's it could actually be you know 0.8 and it's still going to cut through when it's zeroed to the bed. Now if I went ahead if I went ahead and hit it to um, zeroed it to the top of this material at 0.75 and and here I go over on my uh, zero plate on the shot bot and have it zero to the top and maybe that's one spot out in the middle. That's like like twelve X's X and Y up is right in here at twelve twelve. I can't get calipers in there to I can't get calipers in there to um, get the uh, measurement right there. Maybe right there it actually measures uh, 0.77. So I zero it right here at 0.77, and it's only going to 0.75 deep. It's not going to cut all the way through because over here it's going to be up that 0.02 that it was. So if it's something where I'm cutting all the way through, any time a cabinet part or furniture part, I always zero to the machine bed. And really, there's no technical right or wrong. It's what works for you. As far as using the origin offset, let's keep this unchecked, and let's make sure that we're zero down here in the bottom corner. A lot of people ask, you know, what are these different options? Well, if you're getting into doing something where maybe you need your zero set up in a different spot, you can move it around. You know, if you wanted the zero in the center of your board, maybe you're doing a drum or something where you need it zeroed right there. For the majority of us, we want this right down here in the bottom left corner. And I zoom out, you can see along here, there's a faint gray line, which is your X. And right here is a faint gray line, which is your Y. And where they cross is 0, 0. And this point right here is 0, 0. That's that bottom left corner of your machine. That's, that's what you need to know. If you have an 8-foot long machine, you need to know that from here out, 96 inches would be where your 8 foot is. So um, we'll get into this stuff in a sec. So let's just go 24, 24, 0 to the bottom, 0 0.75. Okay. So th here's another thing that people, before we even get into start uh, drawing, is what people forget about are these layout lines. You come over here to where the numbers are, and we can pull these out and drop them off and it's just a it's just a gray dash line they're nothing they're just a layout line like maybe we want to define center of this material I could just bring them down in and they just they hang out there there's nothing going on with them they're not gonna be toolpath or get in the way they're just very useful so like for me right now say I'm gonna go cut this on the desktop which has 24 inches in the X so I do this and it has 18 inches in the Y 
I bring this up to 18 and I drop it. I now know that this much of the board back here is going to be hanging off. My machine doesn't have the uh, capabilities of going back that far. So I wouldn't be able to cut this 24 by 24 on a desktop. I'd have to do it in two pieces or I'd have to index it or I'd need to cut it on a bigger machine. So um, that's where it's nice to know. Maybe you're doing a 96, you know, 48. You could, dra you know, drag this out to uh, say your machine length is 96, and here's your 48. So boom, I've got, you know, that shows my orientation at least. You know, there's really no need to do this besides going. All right, if I was to go put this on my machine, I need to make sure that this is zero zero. This is the length of 96. Here's the front of my machine. It goes from zero to 48. So just kind of help you uh, see, to help you see um, just your machine layout. So basically, what we're going to do for this tic-tac-toe board is draw some rectangles. Um, use a few options in here in the drawing. I did a training a few weeks ago on you know Partworks itself, and there's also the uh, Vectric uh, web, the the web classes. On this, so I'm not going to go over all of the uh, resources that we have in here. But one I do like to point out is um, is if you go to help and you go to help contents, and I'm hoping that this is something that Eugene will have read by the next training session. This is 217 pages, and this is his homework for uh, next Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I haven't read this myself, but this is something I've got bits and pieces out of. So this is the, uh, obviously, again, VCAR Pro is the same as part works. So um, what we have here is all these pages of all these different things. So if maybe you're looking for just, you know, one specific training, you can use the different headings over here. It looks like our session just maxed out again, so we are full. Um, it's just you could come down here. I just need to learn about trim vectors. Boom, there it is. Oh, okay, check. I just read that part. Another part that's really useful down at the end is FAQs, frequently asked questions. What kind of files can I import from my other softwares that I use? Um, just talks about vectors and images that can be brought in, 3D models that can be brought in. And then this one here is the shortcut keys are really nice. So you can do a lot of these shortcut keys versus using your mouse. So the material is 0.75, Eugene. All right. So for this guy here, I have set my 24 by 24 piece. And if I refer to my plan that I have, it shows that I have a board, a tic-tac-toe board game piece that's 16 and a quarter inches by 16 and a quarter inches. Um, okay, hang on, let me answer some questions here. All right. So what was the material? I was shutting down equipment. Um, the reading material. Uh, Is there a search function in the help section in order to type the word to be searched? No, the re no the reading material. Okay, good. You guys answered each other's. Eugene, I think you were looking for this three quarter inch thick material. Or <laughs> oh yeah, I was saying, I was making a joke, Eugene. I didn't know you weren't there. This this uh, menu. It's 217 pages long, and that's your uh, that was your homework for next class. So I wasn't joking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for him to write something explicit now. <laughs> so no. So what we're gonna do is go up here to create vectors and draw a rectangle. So what we want to do is draw a rectangle. We can give it an anchor point. Now watch, and you're going to see why I, I do this right now. So I'm actually going to give this an anchor point on the bottom left corner of 0.5 of an inch and 0.5 of an inch. And you're going to see why here in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a point, 0.5 of an inch and 0.5 of an inch. So 
when I go and do this and I say I want to have this at 16.25 in the X and I want it to be 16.25 in the center and go ahead and hit create now when I do this what I want you to see is it moved it in this half of an inch now this is nice for me if I want so I know when I go and put a tool path around it that I've got it in off the edge of my material versus me just taking and clicking on this and using my mouse to bring it in I had set it to a distance that I knew was safe for my bit so when I put a tool path around it I know that it's going to be just in enough from the material and I'll come back don't anybody get all worried about keep it up I know that it's in in the material a little ways versus if I had this set in this bottom corner like this and I go ahead and hit recalculate now when I go to preview this I notice that my preview is actually going to show that I'm cutting outside of my material which for this case is not going to give me a nice good edge so I don't want that for this and it's good for using screws it is true Eugene says um, if you set it in a little ways then you'll have room for screws let me come back to this file and actually show you um, another file that will show you why you want to have things set in So here's a coin bank, and you see how I've got things set in off the edges, one, for the bits to get around, and two, so I've got room right here for my screws. So when I go and toolpath this, there's my hold down screws, there's my pockets, my profiles, and see my bits, they get a nice full cut all the way through the material. So that's ideal for what I want to do. So for this right here, I've got this thing all moved around now and one thing you can always keep in mind say somehow it got moved or whatever um, you can always have it selected and you can always come back down here to edit objects and go to this first the second one down and it's called move selected objects and I could say hey I wanted that to be at 0.5 and 0.5 and if I went and hit apply it's not gonna it's gonna move it but notice where my anchor point is boom that's not where I wanted the center that's where I wanted the bottom left to be so I wanted that at 0.5 and 0.5 and hit apply boom that brings it in there so can anybody here's your here's your first quiz Eugene um, no, I'm picking on him we'll, we'll give us we'll give this to somebody else so I drew this at 16 and um, a quarter and 16 and a quarter but one thing I didn't do that I should have done was it's got a it's got a uh, a five eighths radius built into these corners, and I really want to get you to get away from having to go in here and create the radius and go around and have to click on it four times. Because what if you had to do that for these circles right here? Here's four times nine. You know, there's thirty six plus the four forty of them that you got to go in forty clicks. I'd rather not do 40 clicks. So what's a simple way when I was creating that rectangle or for me to now even go back and modify this rectangle so I don't have to do all the uh, all the radius clicks or the fillet clicks. Even faster than that. And then copying and pasting. Um, really it all goes back to this this feature of draw rectangle. So right now, I go into there and it's going to it's going to want to redraw a new one, and I really don't want to redraw. Get someone else to do it. <laughs> I know a few guys like that. <laughs> Open the file you already did. Nah, we got some comics in here today. So um, what I'm trying to get you to show you is delete this critter, and with this one selected that's already there. 
I can go back in and modify this rectangle. And right here, when I created the thing, I could have said, hey, I want an external radius of 0.625 and have it do it for me and hit apply. And there's those corners already put in. So let me just back up and show you that one once more versus me doing two steps of going rectangle and then going fillets. There's, you know, five steps that I just had to do. I can do this all in one step. So let me delete that. And what I would just do is go draw a rectangle. I got my anchor point. It's going to keep the measurements that I had from last time. I want my external corners with a radius of 0 0.625 and hit, a, and hit create. So there's one step that just did all of that for me. So um, once you start drawing, you're going to want to make it quicker. The less time you're drawing, the sooner you're cutting, the sooner you're bringing home the bacon. So, um, you know, little tips like that are always good to play around with and get get good at. So... All right, uh, another one I would want to do here is <clears throat> draw the, the inside of this tic-tac-toe board, which is going to be these different nine, these nine uh, pockets. And again, there's got to be a quicker way than drawing nine of these things. We already know how to draw that rectangle with the radiuses on it, so let's do a... Uh, another rectangle 3.75 and it has a 0.4 inch radius so with that being said now what happened watch this if I have this guy selected and I come over here and I go and change anything to my you know say it's my 3.75 if that's selected it's gonna modify that it's gonna modify that so I'm gonna edit undo and make sure that I'm clicked off from it before I go and create a new rectangle. So this one here, I wanted to have at 3.75, 3.75, and I wanted it to have an external of 0.4 for a radius. So, and anybody wants me to go back or do something again, just so, uh, just. Let me know. This group seems to be very vocal already, so I don't think you're holding nothing back. <laughs> so there's that. Um, you know, there's our rectangle. So again, what am I gonna do? A cop control C, control V. That's copy paste. You know, control C, control V, C, control V. You know, copy paste and try to do can try to do that nine times in here and get all these spacings right um, I'm not going to be able to I'm not going to be able to get that quite right and if I go and measure this just by doing this by eye there's no way I'm going to get my spacing you know there's a um, what do we got there <laughs> 1.12 1.12, you know, there are different spacings. 1.5, so that's not going to work. Um, so remember too, sweep select. If you do from the top left, it's any, it's everything that you fully in, fully cover with your sweep select. However, if you do a reverse sweep select, it's whatever you're touching. So boom, I was actually touching this, even though I didn't fully encase it. It still selects it. So remember the, you know, forward sweep select and then the reverse one, whatever you're touching. So let's get these out of here. Um, Joe says try a center function. Yeah, it'll just show you those real quick. It's not quite going to work for this, but just remember down here the align objects. I can always, you know, tell it, hey, I want it. I select the one I want to move and the one I want to move it to and then I can say hey I want it centered to the left or I want it centered to the bottom left I want it centered in the middle so you can always do it like that um, this would be one where you could get it in the center I mean, here's the, the beauty of this stuff it's 
It's uh, um, it's it's going to come down to now what makes it easier for you. If you want want this centered like this, and then you want to come in here and do drawing lines and offsets, um, you know that's what works for you. That's what works for you. Um, somebody might now do you know copy copy this object, copy and paste it, and then line it up. Um, I'm going to show you what works best for me, and um, we'll we'll go from there. So. What I actually would want to do here is I want to get this first one set the way. Um, actually, I don't even need to get this set up. I see that I have a spacing in between these of 1.25, right? So I got a 1.25 inch spacing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll show you. I'll just move this over here. It's just one box, and. Um, what I'm going to do is come over here and do this where it's called copy objects in a lineal or circular array. And by clicking on this, it's saying, hey, select an object size. Well, I already got an object. Boom, right there. So the object size is 3.75 by the 3.75. So being tic-tac-toe board, we know we need a 3 by 3. So I can say I want three rows in the Y, and I want three rows in the X. And then I can give it a gap and an offset. So a gap in the X, there's an offset would be off the uh, bottom left corner. So what we want is a gap. And we want the in-between spacing, because that's what ours called out to be. And it call, I mean, you could set these different if you wanted to. But for ours, it's 1.25 in the X and be 1.25 in the Y. So it's the same spacing as far as where it's at. It's the same the X and the Y on this. So with this being done, all I'm going to have to do is hit copy and boom, there's my 9 just like that, perfectly spaced. So the next thing to do would be to get those centered inside of the big box which is our 16 and a quarter inch box over here. So with those selected, you could say shift, hold this down, and move it over. But what happened? Good deal. Man, we got some overachievers in this class. We'll be handing out some gold, gold, gold shop bot mouse pads at the end. <laughs> so um, Joe called this out correct here. I forgot to group it. So the quickest way to get back is edit undo, which for most of us will start learning is control Z. So boom, it brings it back. So what I want to do, if I want to keep these spaced in the exact spot that they are and move them over here, I need to select them all and I need to group them. And to group things is right here, group selected objects, ungroup selected objects. And when you get done reading the 217 pages of help contents, you'll know that there's a quick command for this. So instead of clicking here, I can simply just hit G, and it will group them together. And it groups them together. So exactly what a group is, um, is now these are locked. So when I move it, they all move together. If I wanted to double click and scale it, they all scale together. So that's what happens when they're grouped. So now I will say I want to move this group into this box. So I need to select the one I want to move. I need to hold the shift key and then select where it's going to get moved to. And I go ahead and say center objects and it centers some objects, and there you go, you're done. So to do this without without talking, you know, this is just a, you know, a 30 second thing. You can get through this. So, you know, th that's just a way to draw quick. I mean, for anybody out there that's clicking on these one by one and moving these around one by one to getting them just right, um, there's always, what else can you do out there? <laughs> I'm not repeating that one, Joe. <gasps> oh shoot. We have got some <laughs> Oh 
Golly, <laughs> you got me. So um, that is quick, yes. Uh, that's how you do it. All right, so we got the main board, check. Uh, the next thing we'd want to do is draw our uh, draw our game pieces. So we need an X and we need an O times five. I could do trainings all day long with you guys and just sit here. <laughs> oh man, that is good. All right, so let's do the let's do the. Uh, the X first. So for this X, it looks like it's a four inch. It's a four inch piece. That's an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half uh, wide. So to show you some of my uh, expert knowledge here, as long as you don't share it with the anybody outside of our group here, this is another quick trick you can do. Um, I'm gonna first come up here and draw a rectangle. And you know, here's my rectangle. What I want for this, though, is I wanted to have external corners with a 0.25 radius, 0.25, and I wanted to have an X width of length of 4 inches, and I wanted to have a width in the Y of 0.15. So that's giving me my corners, my, my uh, length, and my width all with one click. So there's half of my X, half of that X right there. And all I'm going to do with this is if I double click this, I can do um, uh, Control Shift. I can, or I can actually just, I can do a couple of things. I could do a Control Shift, which copies it as it rotates it so there's one click you know there's one step that I did that's really the best way to do it um, so what did or what you would do is if you just had this one here you could come over here to rotate selected objects and do a control C control V which is edit copy edit paste and then only the new one will be uh, control C oops sorry Control C, Control V, and now just a new one selected, and that's where you could do your 90 degrees and have it done there. What I did earlier, which was the quick way, is if you double click stuff and you have it so the little corners are out here, you can always hit Control Shift and it's going to copy and move it in whatever direction you Control Shift it. So right here, as I do this, I hit Control and Shift, and I grab the blue guy down here. And that's my rotate, and it rotates it, bang, 90 degrees. There's my tic-tac-toe, X. Now all I have to do is select both of them. And here's where this is good, because I, I probably still have a lot of people out there that are sitting here with scissors going like this, and there's four clicks to get that to be together. Well, that's four, that's three clicks too many. With the two pieces selected, all you have to do is come over here to weld selected vectors and bang it, it subtracts it all with one click so so there's your uh, there's there's your X done quickly that'd be the quickest way when I give this one as a quiz and some of the basic trainings you know I'll see a guy that'll you know make his you know his first his first line and then he'll come up here and do a you know and I did this silly stuff too wasted a lot of time doing things where you know okay now I want to create a mirrored copy and flip it horizontal and then you know the next thing you'd see is doing you know an offset you know um, what do we have here um, you know they do a offset to the left offset to the right you know same thing back and forth so um, get out of you know when you're doing stuff how can you do it faster so always be thinking about that so if anybody wants to see any of that again uh, pipe up or forever ever hold your peace so got a full group today man all right welcome everybody look at this 20 25 I'm gonna have to think about getting the go-to seminar we can get up to 
uh, like 70 people on that one. So, all right. Is it me you're coming for, or is it for the for the content, uh, Eugene? Which one is it? <laughs> right, right, right. So, all right. I don't need that. It's gone. All right. Since we've mastered content, I need the best. Yeah. Thanks, Eugene. I know you're saying that with a chuckle. So, um, just to make this actually look like a X, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And right here, if you just click on these blue corners, it's just going to randomly rotate. It's just, you know, a free rotate. So, if you want to make it look like a legit X, you can hold shift and it rotates in increments, I think like 15 degrees. So, boom, I'm going to make this look like a real X. So... <laughs> All right, we've mastered this X. I think we're able to tackle a circle with inside of a circle now. I, I'm not sure, but we're going to move forward and see if we can do this. So we have um, two diameters, 3.675 and 1.25. So if everybody's ready, uh, we're going to try. Hey, hey, Eugene, I'm a blonde, All right. <laughs> All right, 3.675 and our 1.25. All right, check. So I'm going to come over here and draw my first circle. And, you know, I can specify right now exactly the diameter that I want and say, all right, this first one that I want, I want at 3.675. Now say, say somebody's standing next to you and says, hey, I want you to type in 3 and 5 eighths. And for some reason you lost your handy-dandy shop bot mouse pad. And just that's a fraction you haven't used in a while, so you don't know what it is. You can always do this, and I like to just go over these again and again because I find them so helpful sometimes. I can always do some simple math in here. 3 plus 5 divided by 8 equals, and bam, there's my 3.625 um, for 5 eighths. But I think I actually had that one at 3.675, so um, I could always... Go in here and change that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I need somebody who's going to catch me. <laughs> Jim gets a uh, one gets the uh, Golden Mouse Pad Award. So three point six seven five, and then I just come on here and I click, and that makes it makes the uh, the um, the circle. Now for this next circle, I can actually just. Um, I could actually draw it up here to size and then do the whole um, align objects like we did earlier. Or what I can do is just base my circle off this circle. So here's my next size circle. And if I hover over this middle part here, the crosshair should change. So it should go from the regular crosshair. Oops, clicking happy here. So it goes from the regular one here to bullseye. Deer in sight. Let your breath out, pull trigger, and then drag this up. And here we go to set the diameter. And I said that was a 1.25. And go ahead and hit apply, and it makes it to the exact size that it needs to be. So, boom, there we go. So, for this one here, I got a circle and I got an X. And, you know, again, you could do different ways with this as far as getting it to fit in this material. Um, I really don't find the nest to be very helpful for this, where I could go in here and nest this. Um, I don't think that's going to help us out too much with this, with this guy. Um, what I will do here is actually come in and I'll bring in my little layout lines. I know I've got 24, so there's 23 and a half. Here's one at and half of an inch 
and then here's another one at 23 and a half. So as long as I stay in those boundaries, I'll be able to um, put my pieces in. And I'm just going to do that manually for this. Sometimes it's just the best way to do it is is manually. So, um, you know, I, I could right now group that one together and do a select object size, and I could create, let's say, I, I don't want to do anything in the X. I just want one column, but I want five rows up. And I need an offset of, well, I'm going to use a quarter inch tool. So I want a quarter inch on each side plus some space in the middle. So I can go ahead and hit copy. Boom, that puts my five across like that. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have enough room for my five X's. So, I could probably do something like that. If I staggered them up and down, I don't know. What I could probably do to make those fit. I guess I'm going to have to go back. It's not going to be a true X anymore, but I could go back and rotate this. And this is kind of, this happens sometimes. Right now for this training module, it would be so simple for me to go, hey, all right, guess what? My material is now actually 32 inches tall, but that's not real life. <laughs> Unfortunately, sometimes we're stuck with um, material of a certain size, and this is the job, so I need to make it fit. So, yeah, we got to go buy more wood, right? <laughs> Uh, Steve suggested we rotate the O's. Um, I'll, I'll try that if the, <laughs> if the X's don't work fit. So um, I'm just going to rotate these back. Hold shift. So let's try staggering these. I can suck this guy right up to here. Um, just bring a quick layout line here. 16.8. I'll say plus 0.5 equals boom drops that so I know as long as I stay up above that I'm good so control C control V I always do something like that So sometimes you you got to make, as they say, make chicken salad out of chicken what? <laughs> you fill that one in on your own. So, um, so yeah, this you know this would definitely work like this. These are going to be kind of close together, but this will be good. This will show us, uh, you know, good places for tabbing. So really this is all we needed was um, uh, five O's, five X's, and a tic-tac-toe board. So I'm happy with my drawing. Now remember, when we're going to shop bot things, we have a drawing file and we have a toolpath uh, file. So we actually need to save this right now. And I'm going to go File, Save, and find a spot where you know where it is. This is my start to finish training. And I'm going to call this Demo Tic-Tac-Toe. So I know it's my demo one that I did today and not the previous one that I did uh, for you guys. Man, I tell you what is what is in the water with this group today. We <laughs> make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. <laughs> oh shoot, you guys are awesome. 
I love it. All right, so I save that. And notice what I've saved. I go file, save as. It's a .crv file. That's our drawing file. That's all this is. If I took this to the shop bot, it's not going to do me any good. You don't believe how many calls I get during the day. Hey, I just saved something in um, my SolidWorks, and I want to send it to a shop bot, but I don't want to have to buy, you know, the PartWorks software or the, you know, the shop bot. You get, you know, you got to be able to make it to a post processes out to um, the shop bot and this dot CRV file isn't going to run on a shop bot machine so I simply if it just hit save that and now is where we leave the drawing end of this and we go into the tool pathing end so we're actually going to leave this side and to do that right here 2D control I go all the way over and this is switch to tool pass tab so I switch over let me delete that it was from earlier. Here's your toolpath tab. And if this thing's not sticking up for you and you gotta constantly click on it and it goes away, just use the little pin right here and pin it up so it stays open. And boom, you can switch back and forth. Drawing. I don't like having both open. Some people do. Some people will come here and pin up drawing and then boom, you're just kind of limited to what's going on. Hey, again, it's all what works for you. So um too much is going on for me. My my brain can't compute. So let's start thinking about this. You know, when we are traditionally doing uh, a woodworking project in the shop, and we have to get it down a board. Say, all right, we have a piece of oak that we need to get down to three quarter inches thick by twelve inches long by four inches wide. We got a certain step that we follow. You know, we go and cross cut it to a rough length plane it to a thickness, join an edge, rip it to its width, square one end, cross cut to the finished length. You know, there's there's our six steps to squaring a board. And and if you don't follow them in the right order, the board's not going to come out parallel and perpendicular to each each side and face. So same thing with shot botting. You need to pick your tool paths in a in a in a way that it it's cutting <laughs> You don't want to same same sort of thing. You don't want to you know cut your profiles out first and have the bulk of the material removed and then come in and try to do a big old nasty pocket out of there. It's just it's, you're gonna make a you're gonna get you're gonna have parts coming out. You're gonna chip material. <clears throat> so what do we got here is. I know I've got to do some pocketing and then profiling. So it, this one's pretty basic. If you had something in here, some V-carve text or some drilling operations, those you'd want to run first. And I'm also going to sh show you how to do this with um, a, a, a hold down method. So, so for that, I, I would actually want to put screws in this to hold this down. Say I'm going to hold this down with screws which um, I will show you exactly what I did before. So this one, this one I cut out of different boards, so you're going to see it held out in different ways. So first things first is I got the blank here for the board for the uh, tic-tac-toe game. And you see here, I even had it, I had it set in a lot further. I had it set in an inch. That way I've got room for screws out on these four corners. And then here's my tabs, and I've got to cut the tabs off to have it, caught, to have it come out. So the screws are, are holding this board to the table right here. But how do I keep this tic-tac-toe board held to the scrap piece and that's where the tabs come in and that's what we'll get to in a minute same thing with the X's so I went and ran them out of a piece of red oak and you notice I have my hold downs here in the corners and safely away from my X's and I have a good distance in between to leave the little meat for the X's to hold in place same thing here with the O's now look what happened what's going on right here and I'm showing you this for a reason because we could simply just do a we could simply just do a profile toolpath like this and go, okay, bang, profile, and 
preview, that toolpath, there it is. But this little piece right here, even with a tab, you will notice they came out. <laughs> or tabs are too small, yes. I have tabs. I'm not a big fan of sanding tabs or cutting tabs out, so I don't... Um, I don't make tabs any bigger than I have to. What I'm actually going to do when I redo this file is I am going to have this just pocketed all the way out. It's going to take just a little bit. It's going to take 20 seconds longer to cut all this material into sawdust. Well, 20, sec 20 seconds extra of the machine doing work versus five minutes of me plucking these out with a utility knife and then sanding that tab flat or routing it or whatever, the machine can do 20 seconds. I have no problem with the machine doing a little extra work. Um, so these, you'll notice, we're going to pocket. And if you ask, why are we pocketing those? Well, I cut this before, and I had pieces come out of there. And what's going to happen when pieces come out of there? More than likely, it's not going to shoot across the room and break your grandmother's urn that's sitting on the mantle. But what it's going to probably do is break the bit that's in there. And nobody likes breaking bits because uh, they are expensive. So... So, um, all right, moving on. And then this is just showing the finish. Obviously, I did route all of my pieces a little easier. So there you go. You've now seen into my shop. All right. So first things first, let's do some pockets. All right. Let me delete this one again. So I know I want to pocket these out. I need to pocket them out so that my pieces will, my pieces will go down in, inside of them. And I'm going to actually just pocket these down half the thickness of my material. So <laughs> No picture of the dog, Steve says. No, this is uh, one project that the dogs didn't help with, believe it or not. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man, them dogs, they love, they love being on that shop. Anytime I cut wood... They smell it, and then they want to chew on the chew on the wood. So, um, I'm going to select this. I'm going to go over to my pocket toolpath. And if you really want to focus on what everything about toolpathing, the first time I've ever seen it, go back and watch my tutorial on toolpathing, and it goes over it all exactly. Yeah, I might like to lay in the dust too, Eugene, and then go in and lay on the couch, and then my wife comes and yells at me like it's my fault. You know, I'm like, the dog lay in the dust, not me. I don't know. She doesn't get it. Or maybe I don't get it. <laughs> so I want this to go half the material. So, again, this gets in one of those crazy fractions. I got 0.75, and I want to know what half that is. So I can always go 0.75 divided by 2 equals, and there's that 3 eighths right there. So um, so I set my cut depth, and the next thing I want to do is I want to select my bit. So I'm going to go into my bit selection. And now notice right here, um, I've got my ShopBot starter kit and my desktop and a bunch of other ones. And there's always times where you might have to come in here and add a new bit. So uh, for this one, we're actually going to just use what came with the ShopBot starter bit kit. Uh, All right, so for this one, let's just use, uh, I'm going to use a quarter inch upcut bit. And notice how in mine, you see where I have notes. When, you, when this bit kit came, it has an original feed rate of six inches a second. So that's what this was right here. And I found out on, I think it was this project. No, it wasn't this one, but it was one in some beach that a quarter inch upcut at six inches a second, even at a quarter inch pass, is a great way to break some tooling. So um, I don't know why that's set at six inches. It still, to this day, it says that, and it needs to get changed. So um, 
the software that's how it comes and I wouldn't recommend that to anybody unless you're cutting something real soft so I'm gonna actually go ahead and dial that down if I got it at a quarter inch pass um, I'll just put this one at three inches uh, uh, three inches a second you know that's that's pretty uh, um, that's a pretty good number for that so quarter inch deep three inches a second you know, if I change anything else, I always make notes so I can come back and and uh, um, and know where it was from the factory. So I got a quarter inch upcut, and then this goes into here again where we got to pick if we're going to have a climber convention. And the, and the way we get you, the way we get you going at this is if it's something Mother Nature grew, you know, just standard wood, um, I recommend doing a climb cut. If this was cut out of plywood or something synthetic, man-made, um, have it do a conventional cut. And this is just the direction it's going around, counterclockwise versus uh, um, clockwise. And and always remember that the real test to do is start it out with my suggestions and then um, go into cutting it. Feel the edge of your piece, and then feel the edge of your scrap piece. If the scrap piece has a nicer edge than your finished material, come back in here and change it to the other direction <laughs> and leave it like that. Okay, Kevin asked a question. How fast should your RPM be versus your feed rate? Well, you can get into feeds and speeds all day long. And I actually did a training. It's called the Tool Database one. Uh, where we talk about calculating feeds and speeds and really just to show you real quick on where I get these from and I've kinda got some of them memorized now is in our ShopBot 3 we actually have a chip load calculator so if you go into tools and you come down here to chip load calculator it's gonna pop this critter up and if you go in here and read about it, it's going to talk about what chip loads you should have. So if we're going to be, we're pretty much using hardwood, oak, maple, and birch or beech. So I know that I've got a hardwood. Sorry, here I got an error message coming up. Oh man, computer, computer's crashing. Hold on. Okay, we got people trying to log in still. Don't give up your seats. You'll never make it back in. <laughs> Let me do a don't show again. All right. So I know I got a hardwood. I want to chip between 0 0.005 and 0 0.020. So let's just, we know that's like a 0.01. It would be right in the middle of that. So um, if I'm only going quarter inch diameter, quarter inch deep, that's how I'd go. If I was going a little bit deeper, I'd have to reduce the chip load by 25. But go ahead and read this one on your own time. But to get the basics of it, here's the chip load calculator. So I know I've got a bit that has two flutes, two cutting edges. I want a chip load of, say, uh, 0.01. My machine, is my machine capable of cutting three inches a second? Well, think about it. Um, you know, it all depends on if you have a spindle, a router, alpha, or standard. Um, mine, you know, I think we're, we're going a quarter inch deep. Um, we're all pretty capable of doing that. So I'm going to hit calculate. Well, that's showing 9,000 RPM. Um, for you guys with the routers, you know, that's a nice low RPM. That's fine. Um, you know, the, our HSD spindles, uh, I think the lowest we can go on them is 12,000. So let me see if what my cutting speed would have to be if I wanted this at 12,000. So four inches a second. So now we're getting up there pretty quick. You know, if I have a standard, that's it's probably um, getting to be too fast. I don't want to lose position. So um, for an alpha, I'd say you're done playing around with this. Just leave it alone. So let's see what would happen if we had it at 12,000 RPMs and we actually just went down to the three calculate 0 0.0075 well technically if you come in here chip load on this is 0 0.005 to 0 0.020 so 0 0.0075 is within that range you're still fine so um, 
with a spindle, honestly, it's really most of us think, hey, the faster the RPM, the smoother the cut. But and I've seen I just because I've seen it now, I actually believe it is you know when you're cutting your plywoods and your hardwoods, you know fourteen thousand is the highest I'll ever go with spindles. Otherwise, you're just making fine fine sawdust which in a sense is just burning the blade, it's sanding, it's not cutting. You want a nice rough chip out of there, and doing that with a sharp bit is going to get you a great edge. And We, we can touch more back on this um, at the end if you guys want to talk a little bit more about it. So let me get going again on this guy. So this one here, I wanted to do this pocket. And I wanted it to be, excuse me, 0.375 deep. And I wanted to use my quarter inch up cut. Okay. And since this is going to be out of, say, a piece of uh, oak, I'm going to have it uh, cutting with the climb cut direction. And, oh, hang on, I've got a few more questions here. Uh, you can be under the chip load, just not over, right? Um, you know, being under is just as bad as being over. So um, you want to be right in the middle. Well, up cut for me, Jim, versus a down cut is a good question. So he asked me, why did I pick an up cut versus the down cut? Well, this is a thick piece of wood. It's three quarters of an inch. I'm really not worried about it being lifted up off the table. So. You know, if this was like an eighth inch piece of material and we were trying to make some cuts, I'd probably want a down cut because I'd want the downward force of that bit to be pushing my material um, down down against the table. If I used a, a up cut bit on that thin material, it's going to lift it up where there's no hold down. But having three quarter inch with it held in the corners, it's not going to lift the material up. But what it is going to do is lift up all of the sawdust. So the more sawdust that gets sucked up out of there, um, the you know the the less wear and tear and keeping it cooler on my bit, and um, the less sawdust I got to blow out at the end. So I'm gonna leave it with an up cut. And you just gotta know your materials too, like Jim's saying, um, understand the material, but you won't get more burrs with an up cut. Um, so. Uh, yeah, all right. Everybody's got all kinds of all kinds of info. So, all right, up cut, climb direction. And again, uh Kevin, a compression bit is really only you want to use that for plywood. Um I've tried it on my hardwoods and stuff. It's just I it, yeah, using just an up cut or down cut works just as good. It's a lot cheaper bit and but a compression is a little dandy when you have uh when you have I don't no nope, nope I don't like using a compression on MDF. MDF's thin sawdust and I just feel like it burns and takes the life of that. I use an upcut on MDF. Alright. So a ramp. Anybody not familiar with a ramp, what a ramp is, is instead of just the bit going straight down, kind of look at that picture there. It goes over uh, at an angle down and an angle down and it ramps down in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a ramp to this, save some wear and tear on my bit, and I'm going to give it a specific name, not just call pocket one. I'm going to have a couple pockets here, so what is a pocket one? So I'm just going to call this pocket point three seven five, so I know what depth this pocket is. And I'll go ahead and hit calculate. Now it comes into 3D view. So you can see by the blue, it's showing the tool paths. I can come in and look at it from the different angles, see how deep it's going. So the the 3D stuff is really good. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole um, software. It's the ease of this uh, 3D view. This is this is like my check right now. I'm being able to see if this is what it's going to do out of my machine. I'm able. This is like my cheat sheet. I can make sure it's going to work before I go out there and lay. The, my grandfather's last piece of mahogany down on the table and then run my bit into it and wreck it all. <laughs> so that's where this stuff's really nice to check on yourself. Um, so I'm going to preview the visible tool path. And I notice there's do my pockets. I notice I got my radiuses. Um, I can verify some depths. 
if you notice down in the bottom right corner you'll see some wording I'm pointing to it with my finger like you can see it from my view <laughs> um, if you notice down in the bottom right corner you'll see a X a Y and a Z position so if you see the Z it says 0.75 I hover over where it's pocketed, it says 0.375. So there I've, I've just shown that I know that that pocket is 3 eighths of an inch deep. So um, there's a lot, of, a lot of checks you can do with this 3D view. Um, some of the other things you can come in here and do is give it a global uh, fill color. Uh, so you can you know, notice the different fills, what's going on. So I'm happy with that. You can change, you know, change material that you're using ah nice piece of cherry it looks good so uh, let's keep going and switch back to your 2d up here in the top left and the next thing I said I wanted to pocket these out um, I wanted to pocket the inside of these circles out I showed you the picture of I showed you the picture of where it popped out of there with my tabs and like I said I'd rather the machine do a little bit of the extra work then have me do it. So um, notice these are grouped right now. If I was to go in and try to pocket that, it's not going to go as planned. See what it does? It pockets the outside because it sees it as a group. That's not going to work. So what I need to do is turn this pocket off and I want to sweep select these. And I'm going to just hit U for ungroup and now I go into my pocket up here I'm gonna just select each one by holding the shift key select all five of these and this is where a lot of people are like well you can, that's a pocket you're going all the way through well I mean yeah true <laughs> but uh, I can tell this pocket to go to whatever depth that I want so I'm actually gonna tell it to go uh, 0.77 um, it's 0.77 deep so notice my material is 0.75 and I'm telling it to go 0.77. Again, my board is a sacrificial board. Um, look at my table right here. Look at all these gouges in it. That is okay. It's a, it's, that board is there to sacrifice itself for you and your shop. <laughs> it's a $30 piece of MDF. You know, obviously you don't want to be cutting an inch down into it, but to cut down uh, just a couple thousandths a couple thicknesses of business cards is not a big deal. That's what it's there to do. I'd rather cut into my table a little ways than not cut all the way through and have to follow my project around with a with a trim router and a utility knife trying to trying to cut it all the way out. So that is fine right there. So you see mine, um, you know, that is okay. Um, you don't want to get down too crazy, especially if you have vacuum, because you don't want to expose that vacuum. But doing that stuff all day long is fine. Um, how many layers? Well, if you notice here, I've got a three-quarter inch sheet for, for stiffening it up. I've got a middle sheet, and then I've got a top sheet. So my top sheet's the one that I'm currently cutting on and the one that I surface. I surface it every season when the humidity changes, and then when I cut down there really deep and I want to hide it from everybody, then I surface it off. And then that middle one, someday I'll surface all the way down to that, and hopefully that day I'll have a vacuum I can uh, cut a plenum into and then glue a new piece on. But that's down the road. You guys can send donations in for that, and then maybe I'll do a, a vacuum hold-down training. How's that one? <laughs> so, oh, I clicked off. So these is 0 0.77 versus the 0 0.75. I've already have the upcut bit selected, so I can use that same bit. And um, I'm going to do a climb, and I can ramp these down as well. And I'm going to call this, uh, I'm just going to call this center of O's. And what's going to happen if I hit calculate? No suitable vectors selected, buddy. So um, I need to make sure that I have these five selected. Two, three, four, and five, and hit calculate. Now here's where I get another warning. It's saying, hey, material thickness 0.75.
maximum tool depth 0.77. Now Eugene talked about a thing at the earlier where he overrides this so he doesn't see it. And that's fine if you want to do that, but I don't because what I want to see right here is that I actually have 0.77 because one time I had it at 7.7 .7 and I clicked OK because I've seen the screen a hundred times and I don't need to read it anymore and that time I did that it cut a three inch circle about 18 inches in from the uh, X position and the Y on my table and it cut it all the way through because it was a big half inch bit and it just augged out through both layers of MDF <laughs> on my machine and then bottomed out, installed, and left me with a uh, pretty chewed up bit and a hole in my table that every time I walk by now I go, that was the one time you didn't read this message. So uh, verify 0.77 minus 0.75. Okay, that's 0.02. Now that's what? The thickness of a business card? Is that okay to cut into my table? Yes, that's okay to cut into my table. So and I even had this set uh, at a higher thing. If it was a piece of plywood, I'd probably go up to point, you know, um, you know, point seven eight or point, you know, probably point seven eight. So, um, okay. And then there's some more previews. I'm going to reset, preview all tool paths. There's this one. That one's great. There's those all the way through. Center of the O's. All right, so I'm just checking on the time on that. You know, we'll leave those on and then come back and take them off, show you a few things. All right, finally, finally get around to doing this, is I can do a profile toolpath of all my parts. So I'm going to just sweep select everything, and then I can right-click and deselect those because they're grouped, and then I'll just click each one of these. And there, I've got everything that I want profile selected. So I am going to go into create a profile toolpath. And here is where I can pick my cut depth. And I was just going to go to 0.77 deep. It's a little bit thicker than my material. I've got a quarter inch uh, down cut bit. That's the same one that I had um, for the other nope that is not so I want to select this quarter inch up cut that way I've got the same bit on all three and I have to do a bit change I'm gonna hit OK says it's gonna take three passes I could go in here and modify that but it's showing each pass is about 0.2567 that's fine uh, I want to cut on the outside of the line on the inside of the line or on the line well if you uh, if you wanted, what the heck? <laughs> Eugene, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, if, you, uh, if you wanted to be drawn or cut to the, the dimensions that you drew it at, you're going to want to make sure you cut on the outside of this line because you cut on the inside, it's going to be smaller. And if you cut on the line, it's going to be half and half. So make sure we have this for this on the outside of the line. All right. With that being said, if I go ahead right now and call this profile all and hit calculate, it is going to say you're cutting 0.75, you're actually cutting 0.77, okay. And I go ahead and preview that and I can now check what's going on here. I see that I've got material left around here. I obviously can see blue through it, so that means I'm cutting all the way through. I do see that I'm leaving some material in between each of these. You know, these aren't so close together that there's just a little material, but it, you know, at least they're not cutting into the other part. So that's looking pretty good. There's one thing missing, though. There's one thing I should have added in my profile that I didn't. And these parts are going to come flying out of there. So yes, oh yes. Three of you passed. And are, three of you passed. The rest of you, uh, you're going to have to start reading the 217-page uh, uh, manual. <laughs> so um, 
I needed to add tabs. And instead of going in creating a new toolpath, all I have to do is double click on the toolpaths and then I can come in and, and modify them. So I would like to do that. I would like to add a toolpath. And for me, like I said, I'm not a big fan of sanding tabs. Um, I want them just big enough to hold them down, but nothing more than what I needed to to uh, just pop them out when I get done. Uh, Steve asked about, could you just use double-sided tape? Unfortunately, that's, 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 this is probably too aggressive for using double-sided tape, like that carpet tape. It, it, it'd probably pop loose, especially with going three inches a second. Um, I've tried it before. Um, you're going to have to do some screws and tabs. So tabs. So you set them to the size that you want. Um, like 0.44 by, or 0.4. 0.25, that's a great tab for me. I, I love that tab for three-quarter inch stuff. I find that to be a really good size tab. And you always want 3D tabs. Um, make sure that's checked. With it not checked, it's cutting this rectangle out. With it checked, it's cutting this triangle. The machine doesn't need to slow down as much when it's cutting the triangle. And it makes it a lot easier for you to remove the tab when it's in a triangle shape. You're not gnawing at it like a beaver. You're actually just taking your utility knife and nipping it out of there. So just doing this and hitting calculate did not add tabs. So it's saying, hey, to add tabs, you actually have to go into edit tabs. So we do try to put in some warnings there to, to help you catch, catch that stuff. So edit tabs. Now here's where I can just come in here and say, all right, Two tabs, add them. Well, well, and I'll show you this, Eugene. Right here, you could say you could unclick this and not have it at the starting point. So I could go delete all tabs and not have it at the starting point, and it puts it at a non-starting point. For me, it's still kind of a pain because. You know, I don't really want to tab right here in a rounded corner. I have the machine already doing this nice fillet for me. Where if I got a tab here, now I got to cut it. Now I got to re-sand it and try to get it right to that same fillet size. These don't matter. Um, or you know, sometimes it'll put a tab right here. You know, how, you imagine trying to sand that out there. Now you get the bandsaw out trying to get that thing just right. So um, for me. Most of the time, I will say delete all tabs, and I will come in here and add them myself. So um, for me, I'm thinking the grain on this is going in the X direction. So I know that it's easier for me to nip a utility knife cutting with the grain versus against the grain. So I would go ahead and put my tabs going with the grain. It's still going to hold strength-wise, but it's going to be a lot easier for me to nip that out of there with a knife and being out here in a place like this this is easy for me to touch off with the sander and be done with it now these guys here same sort of thing with the grain now notice too if I would have went and added these tabs to one of these circles or one of these X's before I multiplied them out now I wouldn't have to be sitting here doing this times five on each so depends on how much it makes depends how, how often you like to sit and click on tabs I guess so notice these tabs are straight across from each other helps with strength and then same thing here with my board I'm gonna put four of them on it one in each corner but I'm doing it in spots that I know it's with the grain so I'm happy with that that's a good tab setup. It's a good tab size. It's a good setup. I'm still going to preview it to confirm that. And reset. you got to hit reset. If I didn't hit reset and I previewed it, you wouldn't see the tabs because you've already done a cutout without tabs. You can't show something that's already been cut out. So this is great because I'm seeing some errors already. This is why I love the 3D preview. These look good. See how these are across from each other? That's going to help keep strength. However, right here and here, that's showing me that's just a thin, thin sliver. 
so um, this thin sliver isn't going to hold much. So what I could do on this is go back into profile, edit my tabs. There's a couple ways you could do this. I could have put this tab across from that one and gotten rid of it. I, I don't really feel a whole lot comfortable doing that. That one's kind of far in over there. So I guess I'm not going to do that. So unfortunately on this one, I'll probably just put the tabs cross grain, which is just a little bit more oomph on me pushing it out with my utility knife. So then I go ahead and hit calculate. You know, that's another good one right there. Joe actually had a great suggestion. Um, I could have just moved my, my X's. So where I had that thin material right there, I could have just came in and physically moved this X up. I'm kind of limited on space. But you probably still could have did that, but I feel fine with that. I'm happy with that right there. So this is good. This looks like this is looking good. I confirm on the back. I've got the tabs. Um, I know that I've pocketed these all the way out. I got this pocketed to a depth of 0.375. So yeah, <laughs> Joe will be a giving a guest. Uh, Joe's Joe's going to be giving a guest speech the next uh, the next training. <laughs> So um I'm look I'm I'm feeling pretty good about that one. I like this. This is looking good. Uh, so one thing I didn't do though is do anything for hold down. So for me, this thing will cut fine and it looks great, but I didn't have it hold down. And I don't have a vacuum, so how am I gonna hold this this guy down? Um what I'm actually gonna need to do on this is run some screw holes. And let me show you well, I already showed you the picture of it, so um, right here where we got screws in the corner. So let's do something along those lines. We've done a bunch of work now. We've changed a lot. I want to make sure I do a save. I don't want to lose what I've done so far. Aren't all of your original tabs cross grain? Um, no, I don't think so. They're all with the grain because grain's gonna go here's zero x and here's positive x. So I'm gonna have all I'm gonna have my material running that way. I don't know how I had it set up on this picture. Yeah, I had it I had a bass backwards on that one, but um, yeah, the image is something I did different. Let me show you that actual file. This was a about a year and a half ago when I did this. Um, tic tac toe. So, Ali has been a, this isn't even the original one, is it? No, this has got the X's and the O's. So that was just one I had did to fit on a, on a board, but nice try. <laughs> but yeah, good call. From the, if that was the picture, I would have had them, I would have had them the wrong way. Man, this group, you can't get nothing by this group. All right, I don't understand. Why would you design in screw holes? Wouldn't you be cutting already and hence have the object held down? Well, the answer to that question, let me show you a project that needs about what this needs what I'm about to show you. So, if I go into my documents, TJ projects, where is the patio chair? Here is the patio chair. First let me You have a file like this, and you have no idea if you were just out at your machine trying to find the center spots. And you have to put screws out here because this material is a big sheet of plywood, and it's going to warp and be uh, sticking up. So you got to get screws down in here, especially if you're using an up spiral. It's going to be picking this, this board up out here. So you see where I've got these little circles. 
These are my hold downs. I've got them way out here in the middle. I'd never be able to find those. Um, can you send me TJ documents? You're missing that. You want my 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 stash of files? So you see all these circles, and let me do a, a tool path of it. There's a lot going on, but right here, there's each one of these little spots is where it's going to run a screw. I'd never be able to find those without running a tool path. So I run my tool path, I move the gantry out of the way, run my screws in place, and then I cut my file. And you'll notice on my hold down, it only goes 0.05 deep. So going 0.05 deep, straight down, straight up, I don't need to have it held down ahead of time because I'm just going down and up. Even on a part like this right here that we're about to cut, it's 24 by 24. For me to do a, a quick little, okay, you're good, do a quick little down and up, it's not going to hurt nothing. So let me turn off the tool pass. Let me go back over here and grab my circle. And uh, this really doesn't matter what size you say it's going to be. It, this is going to drill down and up. So I'll go ahead and put a screw there. I know I can bring it in a little bit further. I'll bring it there. I'll bring it there. Um, and then this one here, um, the board would spin. No, on a, like this size board right here is really not going to spin. Um, if you had a board this size right here, just one of these squares or one of these circles, yeah, it's gonna it might move around. But you got a 24 inch, you know, seven eight pound board sitting up there, just going down and up. Um, it, it's not gonna. So right here, let's see if this is gonna pose a problem. Let's go tool path it and see if it'll pose a problem, and then we'll show you how to fix that. So what I want to do now is I want to create a drilling tool path. Yep. Oh, it's going to cut, Jim. It's going to wreck that screw. It's going to wreck that bit, but I'm going to fix it before that ever happens. Teachable moment here, right? Um, so I'm selecting all four of these screws, and I'm just going to go use the same bit. Hit OK. Hold down and hit Calculate. All right. So, reset preview, preview all tool pass. I'm looking for two things wrong here, and I'm hoping you can point them out. One should be pretty obvious in this bottom left corner. Right where that screw would be, it's gonna get it's gonna get nipped with that router bit. It's gonna come around there, and there goes my thirty dollar router bit. Whap, just nipped it. Oh man, this guy is I don't even how to say your name, but you got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> when I ran this tool path, watch how I do this. So I run I run the tool paths. It does the pocket, it does the center, it does the profile, then it does the hold down. It does the hold down last. Zig. All right, I can handle that. So this is in the not the correct order. So you need to make sure you sit hold and move it up so it runs it first. So now I go, hey, run, hold down. And this is how you would go do this. So you would go preview visible tool path. Or if you're at your shop out, you go run tool path. And then it's going to just do these four little nips. See how deep that is? It's not. It's not very deep. And now you can take and run your screw down inside of it. If it's hardwood, I'd pre-drill it. If it's plywood, just go to town with it. So once that's done, you've ran your four screws in. Now you would come and do the tool path for those. And that's how you'd successfully do a screw down tool path. So the other error that we have is we notice that the profile tool path is going to run right into the screw. So I want to go move something and show you what happens if you move it without recalculating. So for this right here, I really can't move that screw too much further over because 
I won't have enough wood to bite on. So what I'm going to do is grab the profile and the po excuse me the pockets and shift them over like this. I know I can successfully do that. So that's great, right? I do that. I move it over. I hit save, and then I come over here and I do a reset on my preview, and I do preview all tool paths, and it's still doing it. And then, then you get mad, and you call in and say, my machine's not working right, and this is where I blame it on, this is me talking, I blame it on the machine, I blame it on the software, it's, it's everybody's fault but mine, I, I didn't make any mistakes. What I didn't do was recalculate the tool path. I've moved it. Notice right here when I click pockets, or let's do profile, how it it was moved over and it hadn't been recalculated yet. So I need to actually, I could go in here and calc hit calculate on them all and change them. Or what I could do is just go recalculate all tool paths. So boom, it recalculates and says, hey man, two of these are going to go 0.77. I'm okay with that. So I hit okay. All tool paths are okay. It'll tell you if they're not. <laughs> Um, hit OK and reset preview. Preview all tool paths. Let's try this again. There we go. That's looking good. I'm I'm getting I'm happy with that. What do we got over here? Uh, Eugene brass screw strip. Yeah, I just used I used one and five eighths. Uh, or I used one and a what do I use? One and a quarter inch screws. So all I use on my on my spoil board. Goes through three quarter and down just enough to hold it. So that's that's the screwing method. And you know that's you run it, put your screws in, and then come run your other three. So two ways that someone uh Two things that I like to do uh, that are, you have for options is when you save these, if you just saved it all like this, it's going to just, this is answer to Zig's question from earlier, It's just, it, as soon as it gets done running hold down, boom, it's going to start running pocket. And you really don't want to hit space bar and hit pause and move it around. So you got two ways of getting around it from here. One, you could just have just the hold down selected and save that and then this would be where I would say uh, hold down hold down tic-tac-toe save that and then you could go right here and have this one here and go uh, tic-tac-toe tool paths and then just have two separate files. Now, and then that's how it would be. You take it out on your jump drive as two separate files. Run the tic-tac-toe, hold down, run your screws in. Now load a second file. That's my way. That's foolproof. It's, it's TGA idiot proof is what I call it. <laughs> what a lot of people like to do is they'll actually go up here and they'll go into hold down and just simply change the tool number. It's the same bit, but they'll go in here and they'll change this to say, you know, tool 12, whatever it is. Hit OK. Hit Calculate. So now when I go and save my tool paths, notice that it's saying hold down is tool 12 and then tool 1, tool 1, tool 1. And then they do a master save like this. And then what will happen is if you go out there and run your machine, as soon as it gets done with the hold down in tool 12, it's going to say, please switch tool to bit number one. The software will do that. It's the same as a bit change. It'll be the same as, um, it'll be the same as uh, like switching to a V bit or a ball nose. And then you would just say, okay, to switch bits, it'll say use keypad, and then you just use the keypad to move it out of the way. I don't like that. That's not my style. It might be a lot of yours. It's a lot of the people here. That's their style. But like I said, I make uh, 
I I, <laughs> I make a, I forget to do things sometimes. So, um, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, how do you remember what tool you used in your tool path? Uh, unfortunately, you just got to know. It doesn't call out saying, "Hey, put in quarter inch." Up cut. I just I know what bit I'm using for what materials. I've got that memorized now. So when I design that bit, um, when I design that file, I just check and say, "Oh, it was an up cut." Then I'll go grab the up cut. Um, uh, Eugene says one file. Make note of bit. That is how he does it. Uh, Lindsay says way more better. <laughs> um, like Eugene, I started putting it in the name yeah that's I guess a lot of guys do that one too um, they would go and save this as uh, tick tack toe you know point two five up spy something like that so um, uh, like I said there's a hundred different ways we could all skin a cat here so it's what works for you make sure you've got it selected this uh, shot bot inch and this is an option a lot of people don't even know about right here and this might help I know like Eugene who works out in his garage or is designing too is you could actually have it clicked right here uh, output direct to machine so when I hit save and we'll just call this temp um, and I have it direct to my machine it's going to load up my SB Shotbot uh, control software, load the file, and as soon as I hit open, boom, it's ready to run. So you better make sure you have everything zeroed because <laughs> it's ready to rock and roll right then. So, you know, that's an option that you have, and that's how I do it in the training area. So uh, you can have that selected. So I do want you to take note, though, right here. Notice that I have a part works file and I have a shopbot file. That's two different files. So um, you're you're gonna have two files. So there's two saves to make this properly work. One is your drawing file that you drew over here, and you hit save, and that saves this entire everything. But for you to physically walk out to your machine and run it, you got to come down and do the save tool path right here, and that's where it's gonna generate a .sbp. Anybody got any questions? And then, otherwise, we're going to pop open the uh, uh, the Shopbot software. I take it by your silence. You're either sleeping or the questions have been answered. Yeah, yawn, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm not done with this. I'm just going to minimize it. I might use it again here in a minute. So I am going to minimize this, and I'm going to bring up my ShopBot 3. Let me just bring up the ShopBot editor real quick just to show you what it is. A lot of times we forget what this is. I'm going to go File, Open, in my ShopBot editor, and I'm going to actually load open the project. Let's load, uh, let's load a simple one. Um, Where's the desktop? Uh, how do you use how do you use this thing? I'm gonna what's going on here? 3D, we're not what are we you guys got me confused. You have not unmuted people. I know Eugene, you can type questions if you got them. I'm not giving you the power yet. <laughs> I don't want to hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> um Alright, what are we doing here? Start to finish. And I'm just going to bring up the hold down. This is a simple file. So this is the Shopbot editor. So back in the back in the good old days, right, the G code programmers, they'd have to go in here and write all this stuff up by hand. And just to, for us to, all we're doing is taking and putting in uh, uh, four four screws. You'd have to write all these lines just to put four screws in. So think about what, how many lines there are to, to cut a full project. But you got all this stuff going up above. And this is kind of nice stuff you can look at too out at your machine. Maybe you forgot what bit you were using. Um, you can notice I got to go 24 and 24, X and Y, Z. Tells me where my home position is. It tells me that I'm using a quarter inch upcut bit. So there's where it calls out the name. You can always double check out at your machine by coming into the ShopBot editor. 
And then here's some codes. I mean, this is what's going on. It's saying tool number one. It's doing a, a C9, which turns on your spindle. It's taking it to 12,000 RPMs. Uh, return to X and Y. It does a pause. And then the first move that it does uh, is a move speed. This is what it's saying. It's my move speed is 3 inches a second for X and Y and 1 inch in the Z. And now here it is going uh, specific. It, now here it is going into specifics. Jog two axes to zero zero, jog three axes to point five, and the X it always reads X Y Z. So point five to point four two to point nine five, and it looks like it moves the Z down to point seven, and then it jogs to three. Uh, jogs three actually so that's what's going on turns off the router jogs to zero zero done so there's just a simple small one and you could go in here and modify it if you wanted to so let's just do and boom here's the regular one now look how many lines there are Can you imagine having to write all this mess <laughs> I know I don't have the patience to so there's to do a tic-tac-toe board there is 4,000 lines of code that the machine is reading. So I call this like the matrix. you got to read the matrix and know what's going on here. I don't like reading the matrix. <laughs> I should have taken the other pill. <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually open up ShopBot 3. And and here it is. And we don't even have to be connected to our machine. I'm sitting in a little room right now, and I've just got this in, in preview. I try to move cut, and it says, hey, you can't. You're not hooked to anything. <laughs> so continue in preview mode. So preview mode, we're getting to see everything, uh, our ShopBot console, our uh, previewer, and then our position. So what I can do now is I can come over here, and I can actually go file, part file load, and let's first run this hold down. And you know, I don't want to change offsets or any of this stuff. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click through it. And it kind of shows me, I'm going to maximize this. Shows me what it did. Uh, it looks like because my position was here. It started out. Moves over here. Drills a hole, moves here, moves here, moves here, and goes. So um, there's just a simple thing. I can also come right here and preview this if I wanted to and, and do the preview. Oh, what did it do there? Well, that's not good. See, this is another thing to check. Looks like I have my material thickness too thick on this. I don't know what I did on that one. Oh, Steve, thanks. Mike. Everybody's material is not squared up. <laughs> I've done this a few times too, Joe. <laughs> so I didn't set the machine. Th Oops, now I'm getting all flustered. Uh, I didn't set the uh, material. All right. Where, where the heck was I? Um... Okay, so boom, you can do that. Uh, I can, you know, file part load. I can simulate it just like I'm doing it. Uh, part load, uh, tic tac toe tool paths, bring it up, run it again. It's gonna give me my preview, tell me my time. Um, here's where I didn't set up my material thickness from earlier. It should have been the point seven five, and. should be set there yep 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 we're fine with that now that I got it set a little more interesting to look at than just the hold down boom there's another version of me verifying it so you know I've used my part works where I have verified it now I'm using my shop bot software to verify it again I can scan around in the 3d as well to check it I got a lot of chances to check this thing before I go and you know, cut up grandfather's uh, 
uh, last piece of mahogany and, and, and wreck it. So, what a mistake did I do, Eugene? I guess I got talking, didn't even see. Eugene's called me out. The student has become the master. Um, probably something back here. The width of the material should have been 24 by 24. Golly, this is a tough crowd today, I tell you what. <laughs> Was that it, Eugene? It has got tabs. No, you try. You try to get me on that one. I'm seeing some tabs there. Right there, it doesn't look like no tabs. But there's some tabs. Oh yes. <laughs> All right. The Z axis looks funny. Um, yeah, I don't know, 75 and the Z, so it's, I see tabs, you guys, you guys are trying, it's not, you're not getting me. That looks all right. Yeah, you guys, you guys are trying to get me, but it it didn't work. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I've checked it three or four times before I ran it. I can always come back and change it. So I'll just, let's just recap, and then we'll get into. Uh, questions and answers that way I can turn off the recording here before we get into specific um, all right so all we really did was we started out with a drawing just a napkin drawing of a piece of, of a tic-tac-toe board that I wanted and we were able to just follow along with this and use it in our software to draw it so we simply just started out drawing it we, we um, let me turn off the tool pass here We, um, you know, we started out playing around the tool paths. We got into rectangles, you know, adding uh, radius corners. We played around with the uh, copy objects in a linear array. We were able to make copies versus drawing, um, uh, um, versus drawing nine of those and trying to copy and paste. And um, we also did uh, some, you know, manual moving around to make things fit playing with these uh, little layout lines. Remember, I can drag them off and get rid of them, or I can just shut them off and turn them back on. And um, we discussed why, when we toolpath, why we made these pockets versus just an inside cut. So it actually pocketed that little circle out versus on my pictures that I was showing you where it actually got popped out right there because of the tab. Again, I was... Uh, um, I was uh, glad. I'd rather have the machine do a little bit of work than me have to sand those or have them pop out and break a bit. And then we just mess around with you know hold down how that worked, a couple different ways of saving that, pocketing, profiling, give them names, some tool stuff. So uh, I'm going to wrap up as far as the recording end of it now, and then I'll stick on here and handle this crowd which I might need some backups. So as far as everybody online that's going to be watching this from the recorded version, uh, if you have questions from this training, please feel free to call, uh, write me at ShopBot or call at ShopBot Tools. So.